All right, welcome to Clint's Family Farm. This is my vanilla series, part three. I know some of you have been waiting for this and I usually do this right around the six week mark but things got tied up so here we are it's about seven weeks now and this is my next step so if you haven't uh, seen steps one and two go back and watch those ones first and you'll see how we got to this point here um, so step two I've been doing for the last seven weeks um, and the vanilla is looking really good well actually every time I make vanilla it's never the same some things change from batch to batch it could be the way that the vanilla is grown uh, from the farmers and how they're dried to here because I, I tell you it it changes from batch to batch because this one's a little darker I know uh, in my video, some people were concerned about the sunlight because I do leave mine in the window. And there's a solution to that. If you don't like the sunlight, if you're concerned with the sunlight, go ahead and put a little barrier in front of there. Both my windows right there, one is doesn't have any film on it. The other one where the honey is has a film on it. That's a total UV protectant film that's on that window. Um, so that the UV light doesn't come through the other side. It's just a regular window and if you're concerned you could just put a little um, UV protector. I just happen to have this quarter inch um, It's a cutting mat really that I cut down to size and I just throw it in there Because um, I really just want the warmth um, of the Sun expanding and contracting every day that helps along with this process but it's easy to mitigate. Just throw something in front of it and have the warmth. I had this question last time. They don't like it. It's got to be a cool dark place. I've done the testing on it. My flavor is not any different than if I put it in the cupboard. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that. I, I encourage everybody to do some testing uh, on their own and see what works for them. This just happens to work for me. I have clients... Uh, that want my vanilla and this is just how I do it because my clients don't want to wait a year I don't make that I make about six seven gallons a year but uh, this just helps me speed it up and I get an excellent product when I'm done so let's move on to today step three um, we're at seven weeks and today I'm gonna go ahead and dump these beans out and put a little chop on them. You see me scrape them, you see me this. And I'm gonna tell you, everybody says, well, you can't use the caviar or the seeds if you scrape them and put them in the jar. I'm gonna show you today that you can use the caviar uh, whenever you want. You're just gonna have to have a, the, one of those stainless steel coffee mesh uh, screens. Uh, I use these all the time. I have a few of these. I don't even have a coffee pot for this. Uh, I use them for filtering and getting out all the particles, but I'll show you this in a little bit. All right, so let's move on to the next step. So I'm going to do all four of these jars. These are half gallon jars. Um, they're still on a vacuum seal from last week. So I'm just going to remove the lids just to make this a little faster for me. And then all I'm doing is taking a little screwdriver and I'm going to put it right up underneath the lid and pull the vacuum off of it. So what I do is I try to find where the lid meets the, that, the thread, the glass thread. That's the closest place where they come together and just put a little twist on the screwdriver and now open it up. You can use your hands. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and take these off. 
All right, I was going to take the lids off all those, but uh, decided I didn't want to spill any um, or bump one over, so I put the lids back on them just so that they were tight. Um, so here I am now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drain this fluid out, and I'm going to remove some of the beans. And the reason why I do that is uh, I use these 12-ounce, uh, they're actually sauce bottles with the cork. I've never had any problems with the cork lids. Uh, I know some people are uh, talking about these cork lids and stuff. I've never had a problem with them. These 12 ounce bottles don't last us very long. Um, I've had them on the shelf. I've had a couple of these on the shelf for, oh, probably two, three years. And I've never had any problems with these cork lids. Um, I do buy my cork lids. They are the sealed cork lids. They're not the regular cork. They're they're a process. They're a manufactured cork lid, uh, lid or cap, um, and you can get those on Amazon. I'll see if I can link that in the description below. But but before we move on, if you like my videos, please subscribe to them and hit the notification for the new ones that are coming out. Yeah, I appreciate everybody watching and commenting, and I'm trying to address everything um, as we go. Feel free to ask me uh, questions if you like. I will only talk on what I do. Um, I don't do vanilla paste or some of the other fancy stuff. I only do vanilla sugar and vanilla extract. So I'll, I will only answer questions on that. You guys are actually following along with me right now. It's February 2021. And next year I'll have all this. I mean, you can watch it next year and I'll have all the steps. But right now, you guys are just kind of following along with me. So I don't have the vid video for vanilla sugar yet. Um, so... Please subscribe and like, and as I put these videos out, you'll, you'll get to see those videos because I'm going to go directly, when we're done here, I'm going to go directly into bottling and then dehydrating and then into vanilla sugar. Uh, and th those are the things I do. I'm trying to get the most out of my vanilla bean as possible. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, like I said before, I use these 12 ounce sauce bottles and a cork for top. I do seal them up with the heat shrink also, my labeling, and then a wax stamp. I always have a wax stamp on them. So with these 12 ounce bottles, what I like to do is, for all my customers, I always put vanilla seeds in there and vanilla beans in there. It doesn't need to be in there because I've already extracted everything out. But for the visual appearance, people like to see them. And the seeds are in the bottom. And what they can do with these bottles is if they want the seeds, they shake it up and then pour and then they'll get seeds in with their vanilla. If they don't want the seeds, don't shake it up and then just pour off straight vanilla. And then if they want to use the, the vanilla pod, they can, they can use a set of these, pull it out or dump them out into a strainer and then pour the fluid back in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but... Most of my clients don't use the vanilla pods. They're just using the extract. So with that being said, I know this half gallon gives me four and a half of these jars uh, filled. So when I pour this out, I'm going to go ahead and pour this out. And you can see, that's just lined with vanilla seed in there. I'm going to leave it in there. And I'm going to pick out... I usually put two to three vanilla pods or vanilla, yeah, vanilla pods in my bottles. So with four bottles, I actually get four and a half bottles out of uh, this jar. The half bottle, I consider mine. Um, I don't use the vanilla pods or the seeds. Uh, if there's any left, I'll, I'll fill them in there. But for my bottle, I don't put it in there. So I'm only calculating for four uh, bottles. So with that, I need uh, I need two or three of these per bottle. And I usually pick out the best ones. 
nice looking ones uh, for the visual appearance. There are some longer ones. So there's one bottle, two bottles. three bottles and I'll throw a couple extra in there all right so that'll take care of my visual appearance for when I'm done extracting and I go to bottling those ones will go right back into these smaller bottles in fact I'm gonna put them right in here We are canners, so we have canning supplies all over the place. Funnels are great. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these in the blender. And I'm just going to give them a rough chop. Because what I want to do is I want to, now that these have been soaking, they're swelled up a little bit. Um, I'm just going to give them a rough chop and open up those pores a little bit more. I'm not going to try to blend them up and make a paste out of it or anything like that. I just want to chop up those ends and... Give it some more surface area to extract that fluid. So I'm going to do that now. But man, this is nice color. The fragrance is there. I'm not smelling. I'm not smelling the alcohol uh, flavor. I really do like the rum, and I really do like the coconut. So I'm just gonna give it a little taste. I know all all four of these jars was the same batch of coconut rum, and same batch of beans. So I'm not I'm not gonna test every one of these. I'm just gonna test this one. Can I still taste the coconut that's in there um, usually about six weeks the coconut flavoring goes away and it adds a little sweetness to it the alcohol still has a little bite but man we're only seven weeks in and i would tell you i would be using this right now um yeah Yeah, that's incredible. So, I I know, there, and there's no coconut flavor. I'm a, maybe a little bit at the end of coconut, but only because I know that. Uh, if I didn't know it was coconut rum, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here. Look at all those beautiful seeds. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I'm just going to put this on. And all I'm going to do, really, I'm just going to give it a quick chop. I'm looking at the size of them. I want it to be about, I don't know, maybe an inch long. No more than that. I'm done and I'm ready to go back into the jar. Oh, the smell in here. I don't want to waste a drop of that either. I don't want to spill anything. So I'm just going to take this off. Hold the uh, 
the chopper. Actually, I'm going to pull the chopper out. You can see I didn't grind it up into really fine pieces. I just wanted to break it up a little bit and then back into the jar. I know some of you aren't going to agree with me on this, and that's fine. This is what works for me uh, in my process. So there we have it. All right, so the other thing I'm going to do uh, I forgot to do when I was pulling the beans out is start my test. I think I showed you in part two of this. So usually when I pull the beans out, uh, I grab one. And all I'm going to do is, if I could show this. I don't want to spill anything. I just want to cut off about an inch of vanilla pod. And then I'm going to give it a quick rinse and some fresh rum. So this hasn't been, this is just fresh rum out of the bottle. I want to give it a quick rinse so that there's nothing from this going to give my test results a, a false reading. And then I've already filled these with fresh rum. It's the same rum I'm using in here. And all I'm going to do is pull the lid off. Put it in there. Give it a little shake. All right, so all you want to do is make sure it gets down to the bottom so it's fully submerged in, in uh, your fluid that you're using. And then I'm just going to put it back in here and let it sit. I'm not even going to look at this. Well, I'll probably look at it every day, but I'm going to look at this in a week or so um, and, and see where it's at because the fluid will start changing colors. At seven weeks, it's going to change colors and it's going to start extracting some more out of that pod. In eight weeks, when I uh, pull the lids off these again and do the vacuum, because I'm going to release them again in a week and then put a vacuum back on them, I'm going to go ahead and snip off another little one-inch piece and stick it in this one and start looking at the color of it. Because that will be eight weeks, nine weeks, ten weeks. Yeah, we're going to be getting close. This one will start telling me how much is coming off of it. If it starts getting really dark, uh, I know maybe I won't take the eight-week uh, test. Maybe I'll wait until nine weeks and snip off a little bit and put it in there. But if it's really light, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in another little one-inch piece and start the testing again. So this one will give me a really good idea on how dark it, it's extracting in this little test tube. And I'm going to shake this every day. Uh, I'll, I'll just shake it. Put it up back on the window seal and be good. So that's how I test. And I'll show you that. Well, the next video will be will be at the end when this is finished. So it'll, it'll be at least another probably six, seven weeks from today. Sorry. You're going along with me. So anyway, got my test going. That's that's gonna sit there. And now all I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to shake this up, make sure you get, loosen up all those beans on the bottom or seeds. And then I'm going to top it off. Put it all back in the jar. So with the vacuum sealing, uh, I don't have too much of a problem with the lids not sealing. Uh, even if there's a little stuff on there, um, I've never had that issue. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. 
All right, so now that I got the jar filled, I'm gonna go ahead and put, I put the lid, the seal lid on there, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a vacuum on it. All right, so I know it's sealed. And I'm just gonna put the lip on it. I, you know, I, I told people to use the plastic rings because it does get junk on there from going back and forth. It, there is a little bit of rum on it. Um, these do work better. You can still use the metal rings to put it on there. So if you don't have the plastic ones, the metal ones will ring, uh, work just fine. Anyway, that's ready to go. And that's it. I'll give it a little shake. And I'll put it back on the shelf. Um, so that's my, I usually do this at six weeks, so this is seven weeks, but that's what I do. This is my part three, and from here on out, I won't do anything else other than every week, I'll take it off a vacuum, uh, shake it up a few times, and I'll put it right back on a vacuum. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and finish these up, and I'll come back. So I mentioned the seeds um, with this process. You can use them. And when I go to dump these out to bottle, because I'm gonna dump everything out, because I wanna distribute my seeds and my vanilla bean pods equally between my four bottles um, that I'm gonna give to some clients, friends, uh, in these bottles here. So I'm going to distribute them e equally between there. So you're actually going to get more seeds because I don't fill that fifth bottle um, with seeds or pods. So what I do is I'll pour this jar through this strainer and all the actually through this strainer because the seeds go right through this and this will catch all the big bulk heavy pods and the smaller pieces and then all the seeds would go through that and then into here and then you catch all the seeds and it's great you could take a tablespoon and fill your uh, bottles that you're gonna go uh, put on the shelf your finished bottles so you can use your seeds um, during this process so I, people say you can't do that if you scrape them that's that's just wrong you can use them you just gotta uh, use a, a strainer all right All right, so there you have it. That's my part three process. So from here on out, I'm probably at once a week to shake them. So anyway, that's where I'm at. You gotta remember, my method and my process, I, I get my vanilla finished within uh, three or four months. And, and this is how I do it. Um, this is the only way I could think of to speed up the process, to make sure I can continue doing vanilla and, and supplying some of my friends and family um, who have become clients and they want this vanilla this is just my method so follow along for the next step um, which will be at the end of this and I go into bottling and then, I mean I, I'm sure you all could figure out how to do bottling but I'm just going to show my methods I will I might do an update on this in, in maybe four weeks and show you where this is this is going with the testing. Um, I don't know how to test vanilla pods um, any other way. I've never seen anybody do it. I've never, other than sending off to a scientist lab, there are scientist labs that will uh, test them, but they're expensive. Um, we send off honey to get tested and every time we have it tested, 
it's almost a, well it is a hundred dollars it's a hundred and thirty five dollars uh, to get the analytical on it so it's not cheap and to know if it's finished or not yeah I can't see spending that kind of money every time so this is the only method I figured out that it gives me a good idea I'm not saying this is foolproof uh, but it does give me a good idea on where the pods are in this process. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. I will live, leave links uh, in the description below for my uh, vacuum sealer uh, and all the, all the stuff that I'm using here. Uh, I made this myself, so I, I don't have a link for that. Um, I know that this thing is impossible to get right now. Uh, I've been trying to help some of you guys um, find these, and they're going fast. The closest ones I've seen were on eBay, and they wanted $100 once you include shipping and everything for one of these, not the set. And the set's only like $24, $25 on Amazon. Um, but I'll put the links to my bottles and the lids and stuff here uh, in the description below. So, all right. So, there you have it, and we'll see you on the next video. Please comment below uh, if you have any questions. And thank you. We appreciate everybody's support.